Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to Tales of Production, the series where I take a look at the production of the various Transformers movies and tell you some interesting stories that went down. Today's is going to cover why RC was cut from Transformers 2007. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, RC has appeared in two live-action Transformers movies, each taking place in two separate continuities. She made her first live-action appearance in the Bayverse continuity in 2009's Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and would later make her second live-action appearance in the rebooted continuity in 2018's Bumblebee movie, and is set to appear in its sequel, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which comes out on June 9, 2023. However, she was originally going to star in the Transformers 2007 movie, but would later be replaced by Ironhide. We know this because from June 28th to July 1st, 2007, Bacon 2007 was held. Each day had a different Transformers-related event. However, on the second to last day, there was a Hasbro tour which centered around the Transformers 2007 movie. As part of this tour, fans were able to view some early concept art for the film. One such concept was a scale chart dated November 22, 2005. Now this chart shows a very, very early version of the 2007 Autobot cast, and they all almost look like completely different characters, despite Jazz, who is almost identical to how he appeared in the film. Now, the reason why RC ultimately got cut was due to a couple of reasons. One reason came from screenwriter Roberto Orki. On July 2nd, 2007, IGN had an exclusive interview with Orki. In it, they asked him several questions about the film. When asked about characters he would have liked to have but wasn't able to put Put in, Orky said this, those two were kind of the main ones. But a few different Transformers came in at various points to serve the story, but the story dictated certain other things. But those are the two main Transformers. I would have liked to see RC, but the idea of a female Transformer needs its own explanation, and there just wasn't going to be enough time. It would have been like, oh, that's convenient, they're trying to appease women with a pink Transformer. So rather than having that happen, let it just be a straight shot and speak for itself right now. Now, this is an interesting explanation since when RC did appear in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, no attempt was made to explain why a female Transformer existed. Furthermore, another female Transformer appeared in that movie, who had way more screen time than RC. That, of course, being the Decepticon pretender, Alice. And there was no attempt to explain how a Transformer could turn into a female human. And now that you think about it, a lot of things were not explained in that movie. And in some cases, that was maybe for the best. Another reason for RC's removal was due to her size. This explanation comes from screenwriter Alex Kurtzman. On July 10th, 2007, WizardUniverse.com made an article covering the BotCon panel where screenwriters Roberto Orki and Alex Kurtzman talked about what ended up on the cutting room floor. When asked why Wreckage, video coming soon on him, and RC were dropped from the film, Kurtzman said this, Michael ended up wanting to lose RC because part of it was a scale issue for him. RC in relation to the other Autobots was very, very small. Based upon Kurtzman's testimony, they wanted a uniform scale for the 07 Autobot cast. And RC's height of 9 feet was just way too small. However, for the Decepticon side of things, this concept of a uniform scale wasn't an issue for Bay, since Frenzy, who is 5 feet shorter than RC, was able to make his debut in the film just fine. So with those explanations in hand, to me at least, it feels like there's more to the story on why she was cut. And my suspicion would turn out to be true since only a few years later on April 3rd, 2009, in an interview for MTV, Michael Bay shared his thoughts on the live-action rendition of RC that was going to star in his upcoming Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now before I tell you what Bay said, you're going to need some context. Before Bay took this interview, the movie was 83 days from release and the trailer had been out for two months. In the trailer, RC was briefly seen behind sideways. This made fans ecstatic since their favorite female Autobot who was robbed from her rightful spot in the 2007 film was finally going to grace the silver screen. However, this interview killed all hype for her. When asked about RC, Bay said the following, You know what? I didn't like RC, so I killed her later, alright? You know what? It's like actors. There are certain actors that blossom on screen, and there are certain others where you're like, yuck, I'm cutting them out of the movie. When asked if her death was emotional, Bay followed up with a grin, saying, 
This isn't sad. This is just to get it out and get it over with. When word of this reached the fans, they were rightfully furious since Michael Bay did not give a crap about the character and just wanted to get rid of her as soon as possible. Three days later on April 6, 2009, Gizmodo.com reported that fans on TFW 2005 asked Roberto Orki if RC's death is really as pointless as Bay seemed to suggest. Orki simply replied, You will have to be the judge. Eventually, when the film came out, R.C. was handled really poorly. Besides taking part in a cool action scene, she wasn't really much of a character. In the film, it's unclear if R.C. is one consciousness controlling three bodies or three separate individuals. The novelization of the film, which was based on an earlier version of the script, adheres to R.C. controlling the other two bodies. With it describing R.C. as a tripartite Cybertronian, writer Roberto Orki explained that she was written as a singular entity, but Michael Bay wanted to keep them as individuals. If this was Bay's intention, it did not particularly come across very well in the film. The only instance of this is when R.C. refers to her components in the plural form. However, Bay's interpretation of the trio all being separate characters is the definitive explanation. Since the Revenge of the Fallen, Dark of the Moon, and Studio Series toy lines chose to identify RC as the 2008 Ducati 848, Chromia as the 2008 Suzuki B King, and Alita 1 as the 2008 MV Agusta F4R312. Now, the question that may be on your mind is why Bay even included RC in Revenge of the Fallen if he hated having her in the first place. And, well, my theory is that Hasbro forced Bay to include her. I come to this conclusion since Hasbro wanted to appeal to a female audience with the 2007 RC figure. Ultimately, they would like to do the same for the sequel. And, with the massive success of the 07 film, Hasbro would naturally want her to finally make a live-action debut. So, they forced Bay to add her in. This can be backed up when Bay said, This isn't sad. This is just to get it out and get it over with. This statement alone shows that his hands must have been tied when it came to adding RC, since he wanted to get it over with. And in the end, he truly did since RC went out with a whimper in addition to Alita 1. Chromia is the only one we don't see get killed on screen. However, in the audio commentary for Revenge of the Fallen, Kurtzman claimed that Chromia was also killed in Egypt. But on a more positive note, RC in the rebooted universe has been handled way better, and she only had 8 seconds of screen time. Her new design looks amazing, with it having that G1 flavor to it. They even got Grey Griffin, her voice actor in Revenge of the Fallen, to reprise her role for the Bumblebee movie, and for the upcoming Rise of the Beasts. And as we know, she is set to appear in that film, transforming into a red and white Ducati 916 motorcycle. And, as you can see, her choice of vehicle mode is an easter egg to her red and pink Ducati 848 vehicle mode in Revenge of the Fallen. Lastly, you may be wondering how the 07 film would have been different if RC wasn't cut from the movie. And, well, we actually do have an answer. On October 10th, 2008, during a TFW 2005 Q&A where fans could ask Roberto Orki questions, one fan wanted to put this question to rest, asking, You already addressed the RC in early draft slash motorcycle used by Lennox for attack on blackout issue at your panel at last year's BotCon, but reports seem contradictory. Could you please, once and for all, conclusively explain the exact relationship of RC and Lennox's motorcycle? Was there ever any scenario where RC would, could, should have been that motorcycle? Or are the two complete unrelated elements. Orky would reply with the following, The motorcycle gag for Lennox was something that we came up after we cut RC, so no relation. However, if RC had remained, it would have been a temptation to make them one and the same. And just like that, that was why RC was cut from Transformers 2007. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Tales of Production playlist for some more awesome stories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot, and it helps keep my channel running. So a big fat thank you to you guys. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro.